Good afternoon, folks. If we could get started. Hi, everybody. For those who may not know uh, me, I am Steve Ozug, the Vice President of Students. I want to welcome you here to BCC's celebration of Veterans Day and acknowledgement of the service that our veterans provide to us. We have a very brief ceremony this afternoon, followed by some refreshments. We have uh, uh, a few speakers who each want to say a few words about that very theme, about remembering Veterans Day and remembering the service that our veterans provide. We have administration, we have faculty, we have staff, and we have students who will all be speaking this afternoon. And so it is a great honor for me to introduce to you the first of our speakers, the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. John Sprager. Well, thank you, Vice President Ozog, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is quite a uh, ceremony, and I'm very proud and privileged to take part in it. Uh, you know, as someone who served in the military, uh, uh, I have a great affection for our comrades in arms and uh, uh, those who did not return, as well as those who, thankfully, most of, most of them did return. Uh, we are very uh, anxious at uh, Bristol Community College to provide a warm, accommodating uh, environment uh, for our veterans. Of course, we do that for all students as well. Uh, but uh, our veterans, uh, you're going to hear more about the grant and the money that we received uh, to promote veterans affairs here at BCC. And I'm very anxious uh, uh, to uh, see it uh, begin its work as we establish a veterans uh, uh, affairs center and as we provide transitional assistance uh, for veterans uh, uh, returning from the military, coming to BCC, and then preparing for a career. This is the true definition of a college uh, to career readiness, isn't it? So I'm very excited about this evening and uh, uh, getting uh, our uh, BCC people here uh, in place to provide that support. And we'll be calling on a variety of offices across the college, not just the Veterans Center. I don't want anyone to think that only the Veterans Affairs people are the, are the responsible agents from BCC to work with the veterans. We're going to cut across all of our activities as appropriate. So I welcome you. I thank you very much. I thank all the veterans for their service. And I'm going to turn it back to Vice President Ozog now. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Sprague. As the President alluded to, last year the college applied for and received a grant uh, to, with a little help from our dear friend Barney Frank, uh, I might add. Uh, we received funding to expand our veteran services here at BCC. And as part of that, we were able to hire two new people to the staff here, who will be work veterans themselves, who will be working in that program. And the first of them to join us this afternoon and speak to you is Joe Cavallo, who is the job developer. Joe. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm new here as part of the staff at BCC. I'm, I'm certainly uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, I served in the Army from 1966 to 1969, including a, a year in uh, Vietnam. Ended up in Da Nang for the Tet Offensive uh, in 68 and uh, have sometimes too many vivid memories of that. Uh, I guess most of what I'd like to talk about is that even though war seems at times inevitable in our world, that uh, we should never try to, uh, we should never stop trying to, to elimin eliminate wars. Um, anyone who served uh, in, in the military, served their country, uh, knows what true service is. Uh, we've all lost uh, friends, loved ones, uh, in the service of their country. Um, I guess one of the phrases that came out of the Vietnam War, too, was uh, that we would condemn the war, but not the warrior. And that's a theme that, that kind of has stayed with me. Uh, while I've railed against wars ever since the one that I was in, uh, I make it a point to certainly reach out to my fellow uh, comrades in arms. Um, and hopefully that someday we'll live uh, in a world that's truly peaceful for everyone. Um, my job here is the job developer and uh, placement coordinator. 
and uh, I can't wait to really get started, uh, engage myself with, with uh, other veterans here, uh, and I, I hope that I can do the best possible job I can uh, for all the veterans who are students here at BCC. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. The second uh, new member of our team here, uh, who I'd like to call up now, is our uh, vocational counselor, Michael Flanagan. Good afternoon. I, too, would like to thank the veterans and their families for their service. I was uh, a member of the United States Navy from 1968 to 1972. And uh, unlike this war that has no draft, that was a different setting. Uh, in a war that has no draft, there's more of a need, I think, for communication and for support. And one of the exciting things about the mission of this grant that, uh, that I'll be helping to fulfill is that its, its mission is to create a strong web of academic and student supports and enhance employment opportunities. Uh, my purpose is to assist veterans to uh, help them to complete their degree and to determine the need for other services, such as uh, career preparation and planning. Veterans, as adult learners, bring many positives to the college setting. Uh, veterans are experienced, they're motivated, they're mature, they're hardworking, and they're organized, right? And uh, on the uh, other part of being an adult learner, like so many of the adult learners here at Bristol Community College, you are usually living a real life with responsibilities. You have work responsibilities, sometimes family responsibilities. Also, the unique experience of uh, having been a veteran. I remember uh, having left the service, uh, it was a massive uh, reduction in force that happened, and it was basically 30 days notice, you're fired. And, uh, being in Maryland with a couple of toddlers and then being unprepared really to do any work that connected to my background and needing more education, needing a place to live, uh, all the kind of things that uh, any returning veteran would have. And uh, a good deal of red tape that went on and on for a couple of years as I remember, right? A lot of words like reimburse and things like that. But it's exciting to be here at BCC assisting vets in a coming home program that is dedicated toward support that's needed and toward veteran success. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. The next person I'd like to call up is another uh, beloved member of our college community who also keeps trying to tell us that he's new here, but we know otherwise. Um, he's the only faculty member teaching full time who has been teaching at the college here since we opened our doors back in the 1960s, and that is Dr. Jim Pelletier. Thank you. To be present today on the day before Veterans Day is truly an honor and a privilege. Um, I was privileged to have served. Uh, I think my service precedes everyone else here. Uh, it was not the Revolutionary War, by the way, just <clears throat> It. <laughs> uh, I do have connections, however, with uh, the First World War. And uh, my mother was uh, a, a nurse in the Army Nurse Corps, captain in the Army Nurse Corps in the, the First World War. And so you can imagine that when I came on the scene, uh, we almost had morning formation. Uh, but uh, even this morning, uh, I made uh, square corners on my bed, and uh, 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 you could flip a quarter, and it would bounce. And um, we were the other day asked, you know, what did you bring with you uh, to the service, and what did you take from it? Uh, I, th I, I brought with me uh, the kinds of perspective and skills that uh, my uh, family uh, had uh, instilled in me, inculcated in me. And I must tell you that as I stand here and I see my wonderful chemistry students, 
that uh, I bring here, hopefully, to them uh, some of the perspective that I acquired as a result of the privilege of having served. Uh, no great credit to me, by the way, much more credit uh, to those who preceded me and those who followed me. And uh, I was in the time of uh, our history, our national history, of uh, being certain that a perceived threat uh, did not uh, actualize itself. And as I look at my students, I think of how wonderful it is that you have an institution like this that you call your academic home. Uh, I'm glad that you're able to wear a shirt that says it's good to be the king because you can be whatever you like here because someone has sacrificed dearly for that privilege. And as we, on the day before Veteran day, Veterans Day, think about that, uh, we should revalue uh, that privilege that we all have. We can stand here and we can feel comfortable. We can feel comfortable in whatever personhood we happen to be. And no one, no one should have the audacity to tell us that we cannot. Because as our founding document says, we are all endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And that is the great gift that all who served have given to us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pelletier. Now I'd like to invite up the first of our two students to speak to you this afternoon. The first is Brandon Haskell. He's a medical administration assistant student. He served in Operation in Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Brandon. Well, what I'd like everybody to remember on Veterans Day is these simple words that I see at the VA all the time, that some gave all, and all gave, everyone gave all in the military. Just remember, I fought in Operation Enduring Freedom, just like this Vice President said, from 2011, and uh, it was a struggle for me. It still is a struggle for me today. I watched my best friend die 50 yards ahead of me. I deal with it every night. I can't sleep. And the thing to be a veteran and to follow everybody who fought before me is an honor. To fight for this country is an honor. Sometimes I don't like to be thanked for doing my job to defend my country. I like to say thank you for letting me do my job to defend this country. P I want to speak on PTSD a little bit, on how, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. And some people think that we can get a little loony, but it's not. It's just an abnormal stress to a normal reaction. Some people will be normal. I'm not. The thing about veterans is that we gave our lives. Some people haven't. Some veterans are still alive, like me. My friend wasn't. And I had to deliver that to his wife. So if you can, this Veterans Day, to pray for every, all the veterans who fought, continue to fight, and who have fought before me, and us that are standing here, to give thanks to each one of us. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. And our second student speaker is Troy Bickle. Troy spent 14 years in the military. He's a Vietnam vet. He's also a uh, supplemental instructor with, uh, uh, with us here at BCC. Troy? As you can tell, I walk, walk with a cane. Uh, I got brought it into the service right at the end of Vietnam. And uh, I did 14 years between active army and reserves. My last part of it was uh, 483rd Combat Engineers. 
Uh, I got hurt in the service, but that didn't stop me from going into the re Army Reserves at the time. Uh, one of the best things that happened was I actually got to meet my wife, and they always say, what do you bring into the service? Well, I brought into the service a young kid, went behind the years, 18 years old, didn't really know a whole lot. Uh, what I brought out of the service was uh, my wife and my best friend that I've been married to now for 37 years. Uh, we both met down in Georgia going to school for the military. We're both Vietnam disabled vets, Vietnam era disabled vets because we didn't go in country. Uh, we spent almost three years in Germany, which was a lovely time. Uh, I agree with everything everybody else has said. Uh, my father-in-law that's passed away and his brother was actually at Pearl Harbor when everything went down on two different ships. And they didn't even know that the other one was alive until they got leave and they were coming home on leave on a bus. And they realized that each other was on the bus and they, they were, were both still alive at the time. I've lost friends. I lost a fr close friend of mine, a year, graduated a year before me in Ohio. I'm from o the state of Ohio, and uh, he actually got killed by a four-year-old girl that was booby-trapped in Saigon. And he didn't think twice about picking her up. And, you know, we, we are hurt, but we are, don't forget us. We don't stop, just like me. I'm a little slower. I'm working on my third career. I'm going to be, hopefully eventually come back here and teach accounting for these kids. But I'm trying to help the kids, and, my, and I have granddaughters that are 10 and 12, and I teach them too. So uh, tomorrow, just say a prayer for the vets that are out there and the vets that are no longer around, because we've all tried the best we could. All right, thank you. Thank you, Troy. You've heard from six uh, veterans of our college community. I know there are others standing out there right now who are in that same category that we haven't heard from. And there are many, many, countless more who are members of our college community. So why don't we all uh, give all of them a big round of applause and a thank you. And to close out our ceremony, I'd like to call up my colleague, Dr. Sarah Garrett, for a few words to take us to the refreshments. Thank you, Vice President Ozug, and thank all of you for coming out and acknowledging the heroism of our veterans. We owe so much to our veterans and their families, so many sacrifices. Thank you so much. I know you said that you don't want thanks, but we must say thank you. My father is a veteran, and when I told him about today's program, he said this is what Veterans Day should be about, Veterans Day tomorrow and our weekend, to remember our veterans, to remember how much they have given up and continue to give up for our freedoms. He also told me, President Spraga, to say congratulations to you being honored as Veteran of the Year. He will be honored this evening as a Veteran of the Year, everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm so thankful that we as a college community understand how important it is to provide the services that our returning veterans deserve. And that we have the grant, as Vice President Ozug mentioned, to help extend those services, to broaden those services to our veterans. So tomorrow, as everyone has said, take a few extra moments, say a prayer for those veterans that are still serving our country, for those who have gone on, and for all of the families. Thank you everyone for being here. Okay, I hope you'll stay around for a few minutes and talk to some of your colleagues and veterans here and enjoy some of the refreshments. Thank you.